Hello guys, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Good, yeah, good, good. So as you know, the topic of today is the choice. Ironically, I wasn't given the choice of the topic. Uh, you know, uh, who thinks that choices, a lot of choices in your life are good? To have a choice. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, I have a background in economics, and there they also taught us that choice is generally good. So whenever there is a policy that we need to choose from, the one that gives you the consumers the choice, that's a good policy. However, I have a theory that choice is not necessarily good. Uh, there was this experiment by one jam company, and they had they had four types of homemade jam. It was so tasty. They had a cherry. Peach, uh, strawberry, and I think black currant, and they were really tasty. So they went to the fair and they let all the customers to try their jams. People loved them so much that they bought not only one but two or sometimes three jams. They thought, "Ha! Huh, it's our choice that helps us." So next time they went to the fair, they uh, brought twelve types of jams. To their surprise. Instead of buying more jams, people bought less. Instead of buying two, three, they bought one or zero. Why? Psychologists say maybe because when you have too much choice, it makes it difficult for you to choose, so you, you avoid the choice altogether. Do you ever have that in your life at some point? Maybe when you graduated, that you didn't know where to go, so you were just stuck in one place? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had that too. And you know, another thing about choice and limitations, they sometimes can be really good for us. Uh, for instance, when you limit the time of the people, uh, as if, um, you know, the employers, sometimes they make time limits for the tasks. And they notice that productivity of their employees increases when you set deadlines and time limits compared to, with, to when they have infinite amount of time. They do more in less time. Generally, they do more, even though there is less time, which is really cool. And now I would like to invite to the stage the person who is going to be helping us throughout this meeting to, to uh, follow our time limits and do our best. Please welcome to the stage our timer, George. <laughs> George. <Okay. laughs> I have no so much words, so I just will be uh, your timer and just... Uh, uh, watch your times and uh, prepare your speech. Signals. 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 Ah, yes, I have uh, the green signal. Oh, uh, the first signal is green. Uh, it uh, shows that the time is uh, will end in some time, in maybe in one minute. If, and uh, the second is yellow card. Uh, it means that uh, you're gonna. Uh, Try to uh, end your speech, and when we see the uh, red card, uh, you're gonna end your speech uh, in this moment. So you, if you can, but if you not can, uh, I will. You will be in my uh, report. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, George. Today we have a special meeting, as Nikola already mentioned. So here is the agenda for today. First, we'll have to prepare speeches, as usual, break, some food, table topics. After that, we will have elections of the new committee, and that will be followed by a evaluation session. So let's begin. I'd like to invite to the stage our first speaker for tonight, Vadim, Vadim Mik Mikril, I believe. Please, come on the stage. Oh, yes, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Vadim will be presenting his uh, project on, ment on mentoring, introduction to mentoring. The purpose of his speech is to clearly define how Toastmasters envisions mentoring. So please welcome Vadim Mikrin, Mentoring the Unique Key to Success. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, actually, the theme of the mentoring is very closely connected to the theme of our meeting. It's the choice. Unfortunately, now, I don't have a mentor. In, uh, 
any in sphere of my life. And I can say that actually I can on, only two people in my life I can name a mentor. And uh, of course we all may know from uh, from all classical sources what is what what kind of mentorship what what is it? And uh, uh, for me, mentor has the two key points that he brings in my life. First, he shows me the, the beauty of, uh, of the peace of the world. And uh, the second, he guides me, he teaches me how to achieve uh, this beauty by myself. So the first, uh, first my mentor, it was actually my teacher uh, of a guitar. Uh, when I was a child in uh, fifth class, I think, I was a big fan of rock music, and I decided to go to music school to learn how to play a guitar. But unfortunately, I just soon discovered that uh, there is no music school in my town where I can learn electric guitar, only classic one. Uh, I've, I've become a little bit upset, but you, uh, I went to classic guitar school and uh, uh, my first teacher, uh, his name was Valentin uh, Petrovich, um, showed me the program, the very, very long list of classical pieces. Uh, I've become even my mood become even worse and uh, uh, after I think three months or so uh, I came to him and asked is it possible maybe to play someone else not classical piece maybe some you know some modern music he answered that no it's not possible because a program but I can play you something and uh, after you learn this program you can also play whatever you want and he played a very very beautiful song it was a classical one but he made it very very funky and uh, modern and uh, after that I decided that maybe classic is not so bad so uh, after that only uh, I think about one in one, in one uh, year or so uh, I already played some classical music and um, decided that maybe it's good to play classical pieces. And uh, when I, uh, you know, became boring, he played the music with me, and after that I became very, very, you know, uh, enthusiastic about the music. So I've um, uh, actually succeeded in uh, in classical music, and of course I learned to how to play rock music, and. Um, uh, I've of course finished the school and uh, at this point I a little bit forget about music I've entered to university and after university uh, I decided to go to Port Dryden and um, the actual uh, the actual reason to go to Port Dryden was not the only my decision it was uh, uh, a desire of my father to for me to go to postgrad, and the second reason, second main reason, was you know not to go to army. I think it's quite usual for people. <laughs> uh, so I decided to maybe to go to uh, not uh, postgrad in physics, but I have a major uh, in, but maybe to go to something more close to real world, to the to the economics. So I asked some friends, and they advised me to go to applied math. It was actually not my major at all. I even didn't like the math. <laughs> <laughs> but it most, was most close to, just most close to business school that I uh, actually in, uh, entered in parallel. So I asked my father for advice, and he sent me to his colleague, uh, it was very uh, famous in uh, USSR, uh, this very famous uh, Institute of the Control Sciences. 
And uh, again, uh, there was a man who first uh, he only gave me some, you know, some very easy literature in uh, applied math. He gave me some books with examples of uh, application of applied math in the, in the real world, in economy. And uh, after that I became a little bit curious about math. So in one year, actually, uh, I've not read some popular books in applied math. I was all actually learned some very uh, good science in math. And uh, ultimately, I learned something not only that only not only to know something to accomplish my PhD work, but you know to uh, to get the appraisal of um, you know of my teacher. And uh, actually, in uh, I finished my PhD job in uh, two years, and uh, it was at the end. It was a kind of uh, you know fantastic to me because as a physicist and uh, the man who don't like who didn't like math, you know, to, to finish it in uh, two years instead of three, it was like magic. And uh, after that, uh, actually, I. Uh, uh, didn't recognize my teacher as my mentor. It was uh, in five or seven years after that. Then I, you know, I, then I uh, got the first first student, you know, uh, and then I started to teach the student. Uh, I learned that it was very very difficult to uh, not only to you know give some some books. Uh, the uh, main thing was to learn him to like the subject and uh, the second was the, to show him a path to achieve what he would like to achieve in this, in this subject so um, uh, my advice finally is for you is uh, if you would like to achieve uh, perfection and success you need the key for this success and I think this well, one most important keys in this is actually your mentor so find it and if you would like to share something become a mentor for somebody thank you chosen to give a joke of the day how do you think? Who is that uh, funny man? You. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> no. It's actually in Mektor Ktagulov. Please welcome in Mektor Ktagulov. Uh, I have a joke. I came up with this humorous story today, so I didn't learn it by heart. So I'd like to test this story on you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I need to test the reaction of the audience. <laughs> I travel to work by metro. It's a long way, so I took a metro newspaper to see what what is what is new in this world. And the headline said, "Sabianin opened a new station." I thought, really, wow! It's like you know, a scientific discovery is opening a new star. So I doubted that maybe it's a fake news, maybe. You know, it happens, fake news. So, uh, while standing on the escalator, the, uh, the voice from the loudspeaker said, Sabanin opened a new station. <laughs> okay, now I got it. I, I received the confirmation. It's true. When I went to the train, I looked at the monitor. You know, it's impossible to avoid these monitors. And I saw the news. And they said, the mayor opened a new station. Okay, that's enough. I thought that um, I need to use my time usefully on my stuff. So <laughs> I checked into the Wi-Fi for free. And it goes to the website of Metro News. And you said, Sabianin opened a new station. <laughs> so I got off the train and some tourists asked me, uh, how to get to the Yugozapadne station? 
I said, why do you need Yuga Zapadne? The mayor opened a new station. <laughs> what is wrong with you people? <laughs> now I'd like to invite the stage our next speaker, Ricardo. Uh, he will be doing Project 5 uh, from uh, Compton Communicator Manual on vocal variety. His objectives are to use voice volume, pitch, rate and quality, use pauses, and also use vocal variety smoothly and naturally. Please welcome Ricardo. Please, your surnames? Antizana. Antizana. Less is more. Thank you very much. I am a couch surfer since 2010. Uh, couch surfing is a community for travelers, it's very famous now. And thanks to this website, I met so many interesting people. A lot of uh, people with hippie vibe, a lot of hitchhikers, a lot of backpackers, and I was very drawn to it. And they would ha have these uh, huge backpacks, you know, huge back. And even the small girls, like even the small girls would have very huge backpacks who was basically l bigger than them. And I, I saw that and I said, I can do that myself. So it came to my turn and I had my travel to India. I bought my own backpack, it was big, it was huge. I put everything I thought I could need. It was like 20 kilograms, maybe 19 kilograms. And I thought I could handle it. That, my friends, was a big mistake, a huge mistake. The first day I was fine. Second day, it was okay. But the third day, oh, my my back and, and my, my neck and even my waist because you have to secure your belt and, and these bones here. And I said, I mean, this is ridiculous. I thought this is ridiculous. I'm not going to enjoy this trip just because I have this lot behind me. And I came with the brilliant plan and I said, oh, I can get rid of my stuff. So I got my, my bag and I, I started thinking, what can I read of? Every time I got to a new city or a new town, before leaving that town, I would just give it away or just drop. By the time I got to my final city, Kolkata, I felt so much lighter, like my, uh, so much relief. And that changed my life forever. Because since then, I became very obsessed with the idea of having only the essential in life. I got back home and I just saw all my stuff. And all I have now is a, a carry-on backpack and a small uh, check-in luggage. The, I am still tweaking it. Because this small thing is because I do video now and I need the equipment, so that's why I have this. Uh, why? You may ask why. Why does a person, in, 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 if it's sane, why do they do that? Basically, I have three reasons why I've done it. Uh, I discovered this year that this is not a new concept. It is called minimalism. And it's getting very famous. It has it's a growing trend. My three reasons that are very personal is first of all, freedom. There's nothing like the feeling that you can do anything, anytime. For example, if I was to own a piece of land, I have to worry first, what am I going to do with that land before I move to somewhere else? And that applies to everything. My second reason is detachment. I became, I've learned how to be more detached in life. Because if you think about it, uh, most of our lives, um, we are too attached to our things. And uh, as Tyler Durden put it, the things you own end up owning you. 
I think it's a very valuable lesson to be detached in life because everything we see, everything we own, one day will be gone. So we better start practicing now. And that's a valuable lesson. And finally, I got more focused. Like now I can really concentrate on the things that are important to me. How much of the things that we own, we have it just because we are supposed to. Like we want to look better in front of other people. The final word to you is not this this kind of life is not for everybody and there are different degrees where you can uh, be a minimalist but to be more conscious about the things that you already have and the things that you can get rid of uh, thank you everybody by Mikhail Pagodny. Please welcome Mikhail Pagodny to the stage. Thank you, Manuel Toastmaster. Welcome back from the break. I'm glad that we have not lost anybody during the break, which sometimes happens. So today my role is table topic master, which means that we will have some improvised uh, conversation in, in the next uh, 20 minutes. And because the uh, object one of the objectives of the meeting today is to hold elections and we will be electing the next executive committee of the club I was thinking that maybe for some of the people who will be applying to the roles in the executive committee this will be only the first or next step towards the huge career up to the real top of the Toastmasters organization to become an international president so that is why today <coughs> the table topic session will be devoted to practice so what will happen when you will reach to the top meaning we'll have a panel discussion you see here five chairs so there will be a five candidates who would like to try to be a candidate for the role of the international president of the Toastmasters and I will have a round of questions the first round will be questions from me to each of five and the next round will be the questions from the remaining of the audience to the same five people and people who are asking questions, the remaining of the audience, will be able then to choose who is the best situated to be the international president of the Toastmasters by putting the name on this ballot. Okay? Ready to go? So raise your hands. Who would like to try yourself as the candidate for the international Toastmaster president? Sasha number one. Vadim. <laughs> okay, you have been delegated. <laughs> so, da da Daria, Sasha, and Vadim, can you please come and take your seats? And I will be hunting for two more people. Two more people, please. Yermiak. And we need somebody experienced. Nikolai, please come to the stage. All right, so before we start, so first thing, thing which each, each president needs is to be able to say what is your name and I will write it down. What is your name? Nikolai. Nikolai. What is your name? Vadim. Vadim. Alexandra. Alexandra. Daria. Daria. Ermik. Yermik. All right, very good. <laughs> <laughs> and I am the moderator of the panel discussion. I don't think it will be surprised to start from the left. Nikolai, if you are elected, you will be the leader of the organization which includes more than 350,000 members. 350,000. And you will be working hard, actually, to make something good for them. What it will be, what value add you will be promising to the rest of the organization. I forgot to mention, you will have one minute to answer the question. You will see the yellow signal after the first 30 seconds. And you will see red after the minute is over. Please stop completely after you see the red. So the question, what will be your value add to the organization? <clears throat> mm 
by the time when we have uh, election, uh, lots of changes happened already. And uh, by the way, we have uh, uh, established a new colony in Mars already. <laughs> And uh, uh, first, uh, uh, first Toastmaster Club uh, is already opened uh, in, Ma in Mars, uh, and also we have uh, uh, a club in uh, International Space uh, Station as well. So we have uh, uh, because 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 all countries, all continents uh, in in in, uh, in on Earth are already covered. So the main challenge in this environment is uh, the right communication. I would say interplanet communication and we need to practice interplanet communication. One of the challenges over there is delay because for the month is it's already you know few uh, you know how many uh, almost one minute delay of the signals and we need to practice more on this one. So that would be my challenge to practice uh, a new way of communication uh, space wise. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Nikolai. My next question will go to Daria. Why? <laughs> Toastmasters International are present in 142 countries. And some, and actually, if you measure the clubs, half of the clubs are located in the, UK, in the United States, and the other half located in the other 141 countries. So what will be your message or strategy yeah, to develop these uh, clubs outside of the United States? When I think about Toastmasters, I think that the major movement is one not of language learning, but of confidence through public speaking, through not just being seen, but being comfortable being seen by others, and being comfortable in relaying your thoughts to others. And there are many cultures in which that is not so a focus, or is it considered that important, or is rather um, not even not even put an emphasis on. And for that reason, I think that leading with uh, an accelerated like uh, volunteer translation for every individual country, so that each country can lead in the language of its own public rather than that of English might allow for greater adoption by those singular countries where you don't have to know English as the main uh, language in Toastmasters. Thank you, Daria. Thank you. And we continue our conversation. The next question will go to Irbeck. Be prepared. So, overall in Toastmasters, there are around 16,000 clubs. And each club needs officers to run successful meetings like this one. The people devote their time the energies, sometimes their family relationships. So, how do you support these people and how do you keep them motivated if you will get to that post? I think uh, to, to get them, to maintain the motivation of executive committee, they should be paid uh, with, with some services of the members of their club. So we need to understand who is strong in what field. Maybe somebody works in zoo and he can get uh, free tickets to the zoo. So everybody should provide this, uh, you know, um, perks to this uh, president. Thank you. Sounds like a good idea. So we'll see if you will be elected, if it will be deployed. <laughs> now the question goes to to Vadim. So soon, and more precisely in five years, we will be celebrating 100 years of the Toastmasters. 100 years history, just to mention. So it started in a time when nobody knew what computer was. And the world is changing, and soon we'll come to the digital edge. So what is your vision for the Toastmaster in the digital era? Um, I think that's the main main thing in digital era will, uh, uh, will be is to save you know uh, the personal interpersonal face-to-face -face, uh, conversations and uh, meetings so uh, I think it's most important will be to save the offline meetings and promote the offline 
the style of life, not the online. I think it would be, you know, the new challenge and new, uh, new goal for uh, this masters. Thank you, Vadim. Last question from my side goes to Alexander. We always say that those masters is about communication and it also about leadership. So what does it mean for you? And what will you bring as a potential future president of Toastmaster International from the leadership side? Okay, thank you, Mikhail. Dear friends, uh, leadership is always a communication. Because when we're working with our team, we need to communicate a lot. We need to find um, thoughts. We need to find the ideas that drive people. We need to find things that unite us. And this is one of the main things that I want to show my global team and each and every club that exists in Toastmasters. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Let's give a round of applause for the, for the first wave of the disaster. And now the mic is open. Who would like to ask a question to the panel? The rules are, you ask the question, I will, and I choose who will answer the question. How Please. to combine our private life with first master's activities? <laughs> it's hard. It's a very serious position, international president. We will be very busy. Yermik, would you like to answer the question? Mm. Well, you can combine the private life with first master's life. You can, you know, integrate friends into, into your private life to some extent, uh, maybe. But uh, seriously, you you have you can get many friends in in this community, and you can have fun and uh, spend your free time with these people, and uh, it will be mutual, beneficial, and uh, very very nice to spend time with, that's all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yermia. Anybody else who would like to ask Adi, please? I have a question to the president of Toastmasters International, uh, Nikola Denisov. <laughs> Sorry, I will choose who will answer. <laughs> and I will choose the person who will be answering. So that's the rule of the moderator. <laughs> OK. Uh, then, uh, as we know, uh, there are somewhere around 350,000 people uh, around the globe in Toastmaster system. And uh, how do you think is it possible to increase twice the members of Toastmasters International around the globe in the nearest five years? Good question. Nikolai, would you like to hear <laughs> <a question? laughs> Right. Um, is it possible to double uh, the Toastmasters population? I think the simple answer is yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course, because it is important uh, for everyone, because uh, uh, as you know, communication and leadership is uh, one of the key success factor for anyone. And if people re realize it, and if people recognize it, that it is indeed the case, then I think it's not double, it's a triple and uh, uh, even more uh, population. It's just a matter of how we, within Toastmasters, are able to communicate further outside of the club how good it is. And then I think uh, uh, it's good, it will grow further. Thank you, Nikolai. Not Next yet one. time for the applause. <laughs> Next, Next question, please, from the audience. If no question, I will challenge somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Tatiana, I would like to challenge you to ask a question, please. Um, I have a question to future president of International Toastmasters um, community. Uh, would you share with us your best practices to attract members to the club? Uh, how to attract them and how to maintain the loyalty of existing members. Thank you, Tatiana. Mm -hmm. I would like Daria maybe to give a response. Half of the clubs in the US share your experience. 
so to answer both those questions, the first one about how to bring more folks in, the second one how to retain current members. Correct. So how to bring more folks in? Simple, friendly invitation. I found that many people, again, have that hidden fear of public speaking, but are actually in their deepest minds have heard of Toastmasters or are curious about it. But again, that's something for the future. Will you as a member have the ability to say, hey, we've talked, spoken about your fears before. We've spoken about how you want to be on stage before. How about you come here with me? This time, this place, I'm gonna hold you accountable. Be here with me. All of a sudden, it's that personal connection. It's that accountability and they have an actual reason to see that this is not a dream, it could be reality. So that's the first one of how to get more people in. The second one on how to retain new uh, existing members is to offer continual development. With the creation of the pathway system, there is an infinite, or rather no, no, 10, 15 uh, ways of continuing your education within Toastmasters and with continual conferences and executive positions. Uh, by encouraging and mentoring those members to take on more roles, and to, to develop their uh, themselves personally, they will continue being invested in the program rather than sticking with just one or two paths. Thank you, thank you. So that we have more audience, more questions. Who would like to ask a question or do a pick? Tatiana, what about your neighbor? So let's give air time to the newcomer and guest. Mm -hmm. I think next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you mean next year? <laughs> then I'll ask. Wow. Okay, Diana, please. The question is, and you decide the number goes, of course. Yes. For if you were in the audience, for whom of your colleagues or of your competitors would you vote? Sasha, would you like to? Ask and why? Wow. Okay. Thank you for your question, guys. I think that everyone who is sitting here next, next to me will be the excellent president. I'm sure that if each of us guys has those qualities that require to be a Toastmaster, responsibility, sense of humor, emotional intellect, and of course strength and I should say that each of us while we are sitting here believes in what he or she does. So I say that everyone of us, Vermeer, Daddy, Vadim, Nikolai, and me, of course, <laughs> can be the perfect example of international president. Thank you. Vadim, <laughs> who would like to ask the closing question to Vadim? Then I will challenge Margarita, you ask the question. What motivates you? What drives you crazy uh, to, to do this job? You know, um, I have a very simple answer. Uh, about a week ago, I called you know, uh, a teacher of, uh, uh, of a talking technique you know, to, get, uh, uh, to get a lesson. And you know what? He asked me that he, she, never heard about Toastmasters. And I think this is really strange. Uh, so, I think it's it. We must promote more and more, and uh, we must double our, and uh, maybe triple, as Nikolai said, our members. So, and uh, we must no, make that uh, not everybody who even thinks about uh, public speaking would go to Toastmasters Club, but other th other people who uh, who you know just would like to be a better communicator co uh, communicator came here. So I think this is the challenge. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, buddy. Now, big round to everybody. So you can please stand up. I believe that it, 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 maybe one day will come that there will be five people actually nominating for the uh, for the position of international uh, president, being somehow rooted or connected to Moscow. We'll see if time will come. If this was a real de debate, I would certainly pick everybody. And you, you have a hard choice because you have that piece of paper and you need to put the name who, in your opinion, was the most successful in that panel discussion as the imaginary candidate for the president of the Toastmasters International. And for you, thank you very much. Another round of applause. And now, let us move to the really important part of today's meeting, to the elections. Every year, we choose a committee that drives the club forward, that organizes everything. Everything you see is organized by people, of course, who are not paid anything for their just volunteering and helping Toastmasters community. Today, we will have elections for six roles. Six. President, VPE, Vice President of Education, VPM, Vice President of Memberships, Secretary, VPPR, Vice President of Public Relations, and also for the cameraman. But before we proceed to the elections, I would like to invite to the stage the current president of Toastmasters, Nikolai Nyselka, to tell us about the last year. How did your last year go? Thank you, thank you, Diana. Thank you. Yes, year 2018-19. That was uh, an interesting year with lots of changes. We changed uh, uh, the place a few times. And by the way, today is a kind of housewarming party because it's new location for Toastmasters. Toastbusters. We have never been here. And uh, actually, that's going to be our home. I'm going to talk, talk about it a bit later. So, but back to the, um, back to the year 2018-19. Uh, uh, there are several two aspects of the performance of a club, any club. One is a kind of personal, subjective. How do you feel about? What's your emotions about club? Do you like to be here? It's kind of atmosphere, people uh, within the club. That's that's uh, that's the thing which is kind of very difficult to measure, and that's uh, something which is within us. The other thing is measurable, because Toastmasters and Toastmasters is education program. And within this program, we have quite a measurable targets. We have, we have goals over there, and uh, uh, for those goals, we uh, we supposed to have eight uh, goals to achieve to be a president distinguished within seven years of uh, uh, toast buster history. We have several uh, president distinguished ribbons. And I do see that within this year, within this period, we have a really good chance to get another present distinguished ribbon uh, for, for this year. So far we have five goals, however, and by the way, another, another requirement is to get uh, 20 members of uh, the club. And uh, oh, we have 18 at the moment for today, but uh, two more is coming. And uh, by end of the month, we will have 20. Yes, uh, Adil? Yes. Yes, Adil, Adil cool. confirm. Yeah. <laughs> confirm as a membership uh, um, uh, vice president. Uh, this is a list of uh, goals. Uh, I'm not going to go d d in details about it. As you see, we have five marks. Uh, on top is a uh, legacy education program. And below is uh, uh, Pathways Education Program. We have achievements uh, everywhere. We have five goals so far, but today we have uh, we will have uh, one more goal for uh, uh, competent leadership. Today, uh, thanks to Vadim, we have already reached the goal of uh, second layer of uh, Pathways, and uh, this goal is going to be achieved. And uh, um, uh, Vladimir Danilenko reached the, uh, this uh, achievement as well. And uh, I'm going to have uh, another 
speech, uh, another project in uh, Optima uh, former club 19th of uh, July, June. And then by doing this, we will get eight goals, which means uh, the, uh, the, the purpose of getting uh, those um, uh, uh, president distinguished uh, uh, goal is going to be achieved. So that's, uh, that's I think, very good achievement. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, Gladyshaw, please come to the stage. Dear fellow Toastmasters and guests, dear Vadim, Thank you very much for a very good speech. And by the way, I remember myself evaluating your, one of your previous speeches, and I have to confess you made a progress. And the, uh, the part I like most of all in your speech, that a solid part of it was a touching personal story. Very good story about um, mentoring uh, your relationship with teachers. You structurized that part of your speech. So that was a very listenable, very good listenable part. At the same time, I have to mention that it, it maybe it was too long. I sometimes I lost uh, connections between parts of your story. I also liked how you started. You connected with the theme of the meeting very smoothly. It almost like was a continuation of Toastmasters presentation. Also, I like that you mentioned from the very beginning points, but. Let me give you a small piece of advice here. When you use numbers to list something, try to use odd numbers, not even. So if you listed three points, that would be better absorbed by audience. So uh, crowd likes odd numbers rather than even. So eye contact, I put it in a drawback section because you didn't look at this area of, if, if, if this uh, part of the audience, you look there, even though it was signed there, I think. Work on your grammar. I, I think uh, Marian, if we can, can, can report. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. How much time did it take you to prepare? I had a feeling uh, that you almost mm -hmm. uh, had a spontaneous speech. You didn't have much time to prepare. Uh, no? Actually, um, um, I prepared, first I prepared one speech, I mean, and uh, then I decided to to modify it almost, almost completely. So uh, it was kind of spontaneous. So it, it, it was it was about I don't know maybe one uh, one hour, something like. I that. had a feeling of it, and it is good and bad on on the, on the same time. It's good that uh, you were good creating speech like almost from the scratch. But if it was a serious presentation, it's better to have thorough preparation to work on details and everything. Let me congratulate, congratulate you on a great speech and I wish you good luck and looking forward to your next speech. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, Tatiana, for your evaluation. What I like about your evaluation, Tatiana, is uh, uh, specific. You provided a very specific advice uh, for, um, uh, for Vadim. And, uh, um, and uh, I, I also like your, your speech that it was a personal story. Uh, my a little bit, just a few more uh, feedback set to, to your speech, uh, um, uh, Vadim, as well from my side. Um, uh, I see that you were uh, under stress a little bit. I don't see freedom at the stage uh, when you provide a speech. A bit more emotions. I think a voice varieties would be good. Plus. Watching, uh, look, um, uh, look forward for the for the time because I think you exceeded uh, time a bit more. Um, uh, and uh, a, a new uh, a new thing which you inve invented, uh, Tatiana, during the evaluation, a discussion with the um, with the with the speaker. That's that's a new thing. I, I've never seen it before in our evaluation uh, sessions, uh, and I like new things as well. Right now, I'd like to invite to the stage another. Uh, personal evaluator for Ricardo, Anna Elina, please come to the stage. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ricardo, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for your speech and my evaluation will go as follows. First I will tell something about the structure and the message. Then the, uh, uh, 
about the objectives of your speech and the delivery. So, uh, as for the structure and the message, the beginning was very good. You uh, tell us the personal story and it was interesting to listen to it. And then the body included the um, principles. You to told us about the principles uh, uh, of your life and that were also good, well done. Uh, the title also, so the whole your speech supported the title, and it is plus. But the ending was a little bit messy. So uh, I recommend you to, uh, maybe you didn't have much time to prepare. So the ending is the most uh, important part of the whole speech because you. Um, conclude and uh, leave us with the what <laughs> um, uh, the most important things are told at the end. Uh, what, what about the objectives? So you took the project from the CC manual. It was about the voice voice variety, variety. and you try you tried to follow this the <laughs> um, the tried to follow this lesson. So, in the beginning, I remember you stressed the, uh, some adjectives like big mistake, brilliant plan, with your voice, not only with gestures. And that was good. And I remember the moment when you showed some tiredness, you told that you were tired with your backpack, and you also showed it with your voice. But all these uh, instances were only in the beginning. I didn't hear them in the body and in the conclusion. Um, as for delivery, I liked it very much. You were very open, you were um, positive, you smiled a lot, so and you moved at the stage a bit. Uh, well, it was well done. So, to conclude, I um, recommend you to continue to in, incorporate personal stories in your speeches. It is always interesting to listen to them. And uh, telling personal stories, you can be more emotional, and the voice and the gestures will come just naturally. <laughs> you don't even have to try or to. <laughs> uh, then, prepare, make. Prepare more <laughs> and think about the ending first. Write it first, even before your beginning. So what you want to say to us, think about this first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for, the, uh, for the good evaluation. I, I do see you have so many things to, to, <laughs> to, to say to Ricardo, which, which is really, really good. And uh, I also like your speech in, uh, with the, your philosophical concept of uh, minimalism, uh, and uh, that's that's interesting to, to know um, what what's what's behind uh, about this. It, it, it's it's uh, it's really interesting. Um, uh, uh, on a, uh, structural feedback, very good. Uh, specific structural, lots of things. But with, with when when you see, when you say. A lot, mm -hmm. maybe it's difficult for a person to be to pay attention to specific things. Uh, usually, uh, three things are sufficient to provide a feedback. The other things could be provided uh, uh, offline, I think. Right uh, now, it's time to invite to the stage our timer the, uh, for, for for the robot. Yes, George. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'll be very brief. I have a very uh, short list. Uh, first, I want to tell you, Adim, uh, you reduced your speech by one minute, so try to uh, work on it. And you have a very good pronunciation, a very confident uh, uh, body language. So, and try to work on this uh, field. And uh, in table topic speakers. Uh, Dari Alexandra and Vadim also, uh, you just uh, overdue it by 15, 10 seconds. So, and uh, Anna, now, uh, you can see. So, that's it. Thank you very much. You 
have a great day and uh, good job. Everyone. Yes, Josh. Thank you. Thank you for a very specific, uh, short and uh, uh, right to the point uh, report. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. So now I'd like to provide few feedbacks in general about the meeting. Uh, so my feedback to uh, our table topic master, Mikhail. Thank you for the for the session. I've never seen such kind of structure of uh, 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 table topic exercise with a with a with election with a, with the questions and answers because you involved uh, the the audience as well, not not only people who are sitting here. I think it's 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 interesting uh, new approach. Uh, I, I like uh, uh, those uh, uh, things when people try to uh, implement new topics uh, uh, du during the uh, during the sessions. Um, uh, thank you for this. Um, I like uh, your neck. Uh, you um, you just um, uh, you just offer it uh, to be a joke master because our joke master unfortunately is not here because she has some some other reasons uh, uh, at home and not, not to be here, but uh, you j just uh, offer it. I, I like your brave and uh, uh, approach to, to take the stage and uh, fulfill the gaps if we have. So that's, that's really good. Uh, thank you, uh, Ermek, for, for, for this one. Um, uh, oh, by the way, about new things implementation, have you noticed a trick which Ricardo just uh, uh, used? Yeah. No? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you noticed that, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ricardo did use notes. However, <laughs> <laughs> little things <laughs> on the board uh, and just, just uh, by, by walking <laughs> on the stage, look at the board. And uh, that's, I think, a good trick because I like it. Thank you, thank you, Ricardo. I learned something new today. <laughs> right, uh, in terms of the election, Diana, thank you very much. That was perfect, emotional, you know, entertaining. And uh, uh, right to the procedure, I think it, it was very, very good organized. Thank you very much, Diana. I think it's, it's a good thing. Um, uh, I... I like uh, Irina um, when you when you make your uh, motivation speech. I saw your jest, uh, jest like like this, uh, which means uh, you already holding this club, which is which is good. <laughs> Sounds promising. And also when uh, the whole committee uh, came to the stage uh, for Foda, everyone smiling. That was uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, also very good me meaning that uh, it's promising that uh, the club is uh, is ha will have a good future and I'm, I'm of course here to support regardless so no no, no question a uh, few uh, so this is about evaluation part uh, by the way in terms of the time uh, we started uh, five minutes later uh, George right uh, the seven meeting itself. Minutes, seven. seven minutes seven minutes later but the good thing that's uh, at the end we already on time, yeah. which means we are able to, you know, uh, resolve this this problem of late start. A uh, few uh, so this is part of uh, evaluation. Now a uh, few announcements uh, we have. I mentioned already that uh, 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 this is kind of housewarming meeting, housewarming party uh, for Toastbuster Club, and uh, this is going to be our place for all our meetings, even the next meeting, 26th of uh, June, is going to be here. Do you like this room? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think it's comfortable. We have plasma, we have computer, we have even con con uh, air conditioning, we have uh, a tea pot, we can make tea here. And uh, the whole atmosphere, I think, is very good and more comfortable for communication and speak rather than in a huge... Uh, 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 hall in the election hall in, in the institute. So a bit far from the metro, but I think it's 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 good. So we'll agreed with the um, Nikrasovskaya Library uh, that they are going to host uh, our uh, club uh, for for this year. So and uh, welcome.